Namaste kiddos and welcome to Johanna Auntie's classroom. I'm always so pleasantly surprised when I get many questions from my Indian viewers about the Finnish education system because I never knew that it was so well known here in Asia and India too. I only knew that compared to most of the other Western countries it was much better in the results and rankings and I only ever saw in media that other Western countries were envious of our education system. But this was not the case some decades ago, still in the around 60s I think. Finland was still lacking behind in education compared to for example the US, but then in the 70s many uh, reforms to the education system were made and in due time we became the most famous education system in the world and I think that now especially during the time that the Indian NEP 2020 has been published it would be so interesting to look deeper into the Finnish current system so let's get to it some of the biggest reasons that lead to the equality and excellence in the Finnish education system and make it very different from most of the systems in the rest of the world are that it's a publicly funded comprehensive school system without selecting, tracking or streaming students during their common education. So in Finland we have a completely free education system to all the kids who are residents of Finland and throughout my whole education that goes to all the way to the university I have never had to pay a penny. Technically we don't have any private schools. In terms of their names there are some uh, 80 private schools in Finland but even the so-called private schools uh, are not legally allowed to charge tuition fees from students but they get their funding from the government and also in donation drives and such. Education is not a business in Finland. Schools aren't ranked though so there is uh, no kind of thinking about oh which school is best and when parents move to different areas or when kids plan their future there is no shopping for schools it is the closest neighborhood school to you that is supposed to be the best one for the kid because there they get to be with their friends and it is easy to uh, move to daily we have highly competent and respected teachers because this is something that is seen as one of the best professions to have in Finland. Also, the government gives a lot of autonomy to individual schools because, for example, schools and teachers get to decide for themselves how they actually implement the curriculum in their everyday classes. My knowledge and experience with the Finnish education system doesn't only go to the fact that I myself have had my education in Finnish schools, but my mother has also made her whole career as a well-respected special education teacher in Finland and she has also been the principal in a couple of Finnish schools. My sister works uh, at the what would be the word in English for this, pre-preschool uh, education, though at the moment she works with uh, very small babies. And I myself have also worked in Finnish schools, both, both, <laughs> both as a teacher's sub and I have also worked as a teacher's assistant, helping kids who have had more challenges in their learning. Okay, let's look at the Finnish education system a little bit more closely. Comparatively, Finnish kids start school pretty late in their childhood. So the school starts at the age of seven and the uh, compulsory schooling uh, lasts for nine years. So from classes one to nine is compulsory for all the Finnish kids. And after the compulsory schooling, you get to decide the direction that you want to take with your life. And for the 
secondary uh, grade, you either choose to go to a high school, which is more of academic schooling, or a vocational school where you get the expertise to practice a profession that is like more of about the like practical and basic skills like a merchant or carpenter, plumber and these can be also well-paid professions in Finland. No matter which place you graduate from you will still be getting quite a good pay and uh, your schooling doesn't necessarily determine uh, if you're going to have a good job in the future or uh, how much you're going to make money. I don't have that much of experience with the Indian school system, obviously. My knowledge about the Indian schools is mostly through my sister-in-law Sangeeta, who works as a teacher in Jaipur, and I have visited uh, two of the schools that she has worked in and seen a little bit of the daily life there. And of course, I also get a lot of stories about my husband's experiences in the Indian schools and then, even though maybe this is not a very concrete and factual experience, I have also watched a lot of Hindi movies, for example Hindi Medium, which at least according to my husband is very truthful in its portrayal of the Indian school system. And I was just like completely shocked when I saw on Hindi Medium that, oh my god, in India you can even like have to take a coaching course when you're starting your primary education and that's just like, oh my god, baffles me, like where is your childhood, where is your freedom, how already at this point you are being coached for the best schools and so on and that is like for me as a Finn just so utopistic. Also different kinds of coaching courses aren't very popular in Finland even though they are, I think, getting more common these days. If you need to take a coaching course, it's more thought that uh, all the schooling that happens before applying to universities, uh, that's supposed to prepare you to get in there and maybe the school wasn't doing their job that well if uh, you need coaching courses. One thing that I know about the Indian school system is how much work the kids here put into their learning. Here in India, I was just shocked to hear that uh, kids go to school six days a week and it's about like maybe what, six to eight hours per day. Now, you might be shocked to learn that even though Finland has some of the like, best results in learning in the whole world, we actually have the shortest, shortest school days. So in primary school, the uh, time that we put into school starts from 20 hours per week, five days a week. And that makes like around four hours per day. And obviously then once a kid grows up, the uh, number of hours per week keeps increasing. And then of course, this time also includes the lunch hour, which is I think 30 minutes. And then uh, recesses that we have after uh, every 45 minute class. We also have a lot of vacation time in Finland. Our summer break is for two and a half months. Then we have an autumn break for one week, two weeks of Christmas break, one week of spring break, and then all the like additional random holidays. So we spend so much less time in school, but how are we still able to get these kinds of results with such little effort and time? You see, in Finland, it is the firm belief of the experts that you also should have enough time for your childhood and friendships and extracurricular activities that are in no way bound to the school system because most of our hobbies uh, happen in uh, clubs and places that have nothing to do with the schools. Anything that can make the brain work better. So things like playing, singing, games, baking, PE, nature walks, arts, music, uh, sports classes, and you learn how to cook and do domestic chores uh, in school, and all these different kinds of practical skills too. 
that aren't just necessarily meant to prepare you for a profession. Basically, in Finland, there are no standardized tests until high school, where you, uh, to be able to graduate from high school, have to take your matriculation examination, which is the same for every high schooler. But there are, uh, I think, two different standardized tests. The other one is, I think, for the PISA rankings, which is the like international ranking, and then just like this, some kind of like national uh, test to follow uh, kids' development in primary school. But this in no way affects anyone's grading or how they will be able to proceed in their education. So these standardized tests uh, basically have absolutely like no value in the like everyday school life. The emphasis in Finland is that you will actually learn something and you will memorize it and you will know how to apply it instead of just like being able to score perfectly in our tests. And this is also why no schools in Finland and no kids are ranked based on their results. I can, like, at least to some extent, uh, within the Indian school system where you have government schools and you have private schools, I get that uh, you rank schools because of that, but it is just so shocking to me whenever I see these uh, rankings in newspapers and listen to the stories that my husband shares about these students being ranked, because again, it is such a utopistic idea for me. and. Even just being outside of the system, it seriously gives me a lot of pressure and, and anxiety to be thinking about these uh, kids just like trying to get that perfect score and uh, kind of beat all the other kids. And it just like physically hurts me to think about that. I mean, of course, we have a little bit of compet natural competitiveness in uh, Finnish schools too, so uh, we did sometimes compare our test results and uh, report cards with my friends, but I seriously have no idea how I actually ranked in uh, any of my schools or graduations. I only have like a general idea that I was uh, at the like top part of my classes because I got such good scores, but Otherwise, uh, it was just about not being competitive, just like having a lot of fun with your friends and kind of like cheering each other on. And what most of my teachers always kept telling me is that we are trying to prepare you for life. But obviously this is something that you would pretty much say in every country, also in India. It's just that we might have different perceptions about what that life really is. Because the schooling system is a larger reflection of the society for which the schooling is preparing you for. And obviously India and Finland are drastically different compared to each other. So in Finland, one of the goals of education is obviously to also prepare you to become a good addition to the workforce, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you need to become a doctor or engineer or lawyer in Finland, because we have a lot of respect for all kinds of different professions in Finland that would be thought as less valuable here in India because you might for example be shocked to know that I have worked so many years in different kinds of like shoe stores and grocery stores as the uh, cashier but that is like a completely fine job in Finland where you would make a good living out of that well at least a basic living out of that whereas obviously here it's not the case and even waiters and waitresses are respected in Finland and they can make their own living. Because in Finland we don't have such a big division of uh, people between different classes and uh, different incomes. So in Finland the emphasis is that if you are able to make your own living, then you will be a respected part of the society. So I hope that this was able to give you a pretty good general idea of the uh, intricacies and uh,
special things in the Finnish education system, uh, especially now that we are getting ready to see how the new NEP 2020 will be implemented in the Indian society. And I have to say that I strongly feel that the policies that are described uh, in this is a very good first step to the right direction for the Indian education and I'm really looking forward to seeing how these things will be implemented and applied to the everyday life lives of the schools. But yeah, I have to say that I'm quite optimistic and I would very much hope to hear how you feel about the Finnish education system after this vlog and if you have some uh, high hopes for the NEP yourselves. Anyway, thank you for watching and I hope you will have a wonderful day wherever you are. Mwah.